Hey, so if you're watching this video, you probably started playing No Man's Sky in 2020 after the Exomech update, and you've probably started a save, died a few times, gotten upset, rage quit, and maybe come back to give it another try. And I know it's confusing to start somewhere in space, alone, with the countdown to your impending demise, already ticking. Uh, hopefully this video takes some of the stress out of the situation. So I'm here to walk you through what you do when you wake up on your inevitably hostile first planet and uh, how to get off it and uh, get started on your adventures. So I've started a new game, which selects a planet for us to start on. The game intentionally creates a starting scenario on a planet that has a perpetual drain on the hazard protection system, so something like blazing hot, frozen over, toxic, or in this case, irradiated. So when you start over somewhere that's already killing you, don't worry, it's already part of the script. Uh, let's get into the basics of the gameplay loop. So you have two meters that kill you when they run out. The hazard protection bar is the one that shows up uh, on the top over here on the left. Uh, it's color-coded according to your hazard type. Red or blue for temperature, yellow or green for radiation and toxicity. Um, decaying nuclear planet is what this planet is called, so you can bet that that's going to be radiation. And as you see, it's already flashing. So as this bar runs out, um, our very first objective is to fix that. So it's going to tell you to uh, hit the button to uh, fire the scanner. That's the right stick here on my controller. Oh no! The scanner is damaged. How could we possibly have predicted that? Whatever will we do? Well, it's instructing you to gather ferrite dust for repairs. You're going to want to get 75 of that. Ferrite dust is found in small rocks pretty much ubiquitously throughout the universe. Uh, pretty much anywhere there are small rocks, there will be ferrite dust. Um, it's a pretty basic uh, resource here. So uh, it's going to give us instructions to repair the scanner damage now. So I'm going to hit the button to access the multi-tool inventory. I'm uh, going to hit the repair button, going to add my 75 ferrite to the damaged scanner part. And now the scanner is working. But as you can see, that meter is already looking pretty low. Uh, so we're going to have to find some sodium the NA icon over here get us the sodium that we're looking for. Um, these icons usually correspond to small yellow plants that will produce some sodium when you press the use button on them. So uh, as I expected we found two of these over here. I'm gonna go pick this guy up. Might as well get the other one as well while we're here. Um, and what you want to do to recharge your hazard protection is go into the quick menu, hit the button on the battery, which is recharge equipment, and pump that sodium into that system. That'll give me about five more minutes worth of running around here. Um, and if you can see from a distance that there are yellow plants lying around, they might also be sodium plants. It could be a good idea to put that into your system as well. This lower bar down here, the one with the uh, heart and the EKG symbol on it, is your life support bar. And it runs out slowly when you're walking, faster when you're running, and even faster when you're jetpacking. So keep an eye on that one. Um, but do know that the way to stop your life support bar from running out is to just stand still. If you need to uh, look around at stuff, if you need to think about something, if you need to plan your next move and you're outside, uh, keep an eye on your hazard protection bar. But your life support bar should take care of itself. Okay, so... Now we've gotten a signal, once we've used the scanner, that says that there's a uh, distress beacon going off over here in this direction. So we're going to make our way expediently towards the distress signal. As you can see, a radiation protection is gradually falling as we make our way over. Not to worry. Um, something that the game does not tell you explicitly uh, but might make you feel a little bit better, is that when you are inside of a cave, deep underground, or when you are in your spaceship, your environmental protection meter refills. So uh, if it's looking pretty low when you get to the crash site, don't worry about it. You can take care of that. Um, with that in mind, something that I'm going to do here and that I advise you to do as well is if you see these blue crystals lying around, the dihydrogen crystals, Pick those up. You're going to need about 40 of them for one of the next steps in the mission. So just uh, kind of scrape those up along the way. Alright, so here's the crash site. Every crash site has a few things. It's got uh, the distress beacon that we were talking about before. It's got some oxygen plants. Don't use those until you really need them. 
uh, and it's got uh, a few packages of uh, varying levels of worth. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not, but uh, that's all up to the RNG here. So let's take a look at the Distress Beacon. And it's going to give us some uh, garbage that we don't understand about Sentinel Intervention and Deliberate Transfer. The Sentinels are the uh, police robots on the planet, and they will shoot at you if they see you harvesting materials. So, if the game tells you that the Sentinels are looking at you, stop and act normal. So we're going to take some stuff out of this uh, damaged machinery here. Uh, it should give us some nanites, or... Oh wow, that's actually a really good drop. Thermal protection module. We'll hang on to that for a while. It's a... Uh, it's actually an amazing drop, like god tier drop if we were on a super hot planet, but we're not. So anyway, uh, we're going to get into the ship here. It's going to refill that hazard protection system. Uh, and it's going to say, hey, uh, the launch thrusters are broken and the pulse engine is broken. So uh, you're going to have four steps here. It's going to be two parts required to repair the pulse engine and two parts required to prepare the thrusters. So we're going to select repair ship systems here. And it's going to start the repair protocols. So we're going to take a look at the starship inventory. If you look at the launch thruster, it needs 50 pure ferrite and one dihydrogen jelly. That's made of 40 dihydrogen, which is what we were collecting before. But we'll repair that after we've repaired the pulse engine. The pulse engine needs a metal plating, which is made of 50 ferrite dust, and a hermetic seal, which we actually don't have the recipe for, so we'll have to find that on the planet somewhere. Let's start with the metal plating, since that's the easiest to do. We've already collected some ferrite before for other tasks, um, and it operates in much the same way. We're going to take some small rocks, we're going to turn them into dust. Once you've got 50 ferrite dust, you can go into your crafting menu and make a metal plate. So we'll go into this crafting menu. It starts you in the Starship crafting menu for some reason, but I actually just want to use my personal crafting. Um, we'll hop into the ship, go to the pulse engine, and uh, slap that plate on it. Nice work. One down, four to go. So that's going to tell me that uh, we're not able to synthesize the Hermetic Seal. What should I do? It says, hey, there's one nearby. You should probably, uh... Hop out and, uh... Go take a look at the Distress Beacon. It's got something for you. The Distress Beacon gives you a planetary shard. Now, planetary shards will mark something, uh... On your, uh, scanner or on your analysis visor to tell you... Hey, there's something in this direction from where you are. So what we're going to do is use that to locate a settlement nearby that has a hermetic seal in it. And uh, this is the hardest part of the tutorial, is making the trek to the settlement to get the seal. Um, so uh, we're going to make our way over there, keeping an eye on both our life support and our uh, environmental controls. Uh, something that I usually recommend is inspecting to make sure that you're not heading for a canyon or an impassable cliff face along the way. Uh, do whatever it takes to get there in time and uh, safely. Something else that you should probably also be concerned with on your way over is uh, inclement weather. Uh, because inclement weather exacerbates whatever the toxic condition or uh, irradiated condition of the planet is. Um, if you're on a really hot planet, it could be uh, an extremely hot storm, etc. Uh, all stuff you got to worry about. So, um... We're gonna make our way over there quickly. Again, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of uh, dihydrogen so that we've got it for that phase of this quest. Um, radioactive supercell incoming, probably not a good sign. That means that uh, this storm is going to increase our radiation. The blue plants here give you just a tiny speed boost. Um, 
gives you some extra jetpack burn for uh, getting to places faster, but it does wear out in about four seconds, so do be mindful of that. Don't be caught in the air when you run out of juice. Uh, as you can see, the uh, radiation storm is increasing the rate at which the uh, hazard protection bar is running out. So, just a little bit further now, uh, 380 something units left. Now's a good time to hit that scanner and see if there's anything that can help along the way, and very fortunately we have a sodium plant up here that we can pick up to restock that uh, equipment here. Should have a, about 40 dihydrogen, so I'm not super worried about not picking any of that up. Bella say Enclave. So, we've discovered a region. You can probably make out that we've got uh, some facilities over here. Uh, seeking shelter in the buildings is a good idea. Uh, precisely because this building has the objective we were looking for in it. So, radiation protection refills. We go to the Hollow Archive. It says, hey, you need a hermetic seal? I got a hermetic seal. Neat. Alright, so we'll take a look around in this other building and see if there are any other supplies. Didn't happen to be this time, just a couple of beds. Um... Uh, wait for that storm to calm down. So it says, uh, use your analysis visor to locate the starship, which is the left trigger. Ah. How could I have possibly guessed? The analysis visor is also broken. So let's go over here and hit the install technology button. Grab the analysis visor. It'll tell you that you need some carbon nanotubes. A carbon nanotube is made of 50 carbon, and uh, carbon is made of plants. So... Let's go out here and blast a couple of plants to get some uh, carbon. Okay, pretty simple. Go back to the uh, exosuit inventory, hit this A button to go to craft product, make a carbon nanotube, go to the analysis visor, and uh, pop that nanotube in. Now, press that analysis visor button again, and uh, here it is. So, uh, once you've got the analysis visor open, you can use the scanner to tell you what things are. These animals here, they're actually really cute. Um, with, they have their own little night lights over their heads. That's kind of nice. Um, anyway, so the next step is to uh, get back to the starship here, because we don't really have a whole lot of time to waste with the life support running out. Um, that's where the oxygen that I mentioned earlier comes in handy. But, uh, unfortunately there's a, there's a little trap here and something that I think is not particularly well done in this tutorial, and that's that you also need the oxygen for a crafting material. So, uh, just be careful with that. Maybe use your scanner and pick up some oxygen along the way. It's uh, the same distance it was to walk over here, so it'll be about a kilometer's worth of walk. This is where if I were like a big time YouTuber or something, I would, you know, shout out my sponsors, but, uh, ain't got none. The weather is a lot more pleasant on the way back because the uh, scripted storm event isn't uh, beating us to death. Looks like there might be some mineral deposits out here, uh, which is interesting but not necessarily useful since I think my goal is going to be to get us off this miserable rock as fast as possible. This is a uh, hazardous plant, and uh, we can zap that. Hazardous plants actually usually have uh, oxygen or sodium as a sort of incentive for uh, blasting them instead of just running past them every time. 
so that'll give us a little bit of oxygen. Um, since we're not building anything yet, we'll go ahead and pop some of that into the life support here. And uh, that'll give us a little bit of extra time to uh, screw around. So we'll uh, gather up some more resources. A little bit of extra ferrite is good uh, since we got to do some crafting with it. Uh, looks like there's something glowing over here that might be sodium. We'll just hit it with a scan. Yeah. That could be useful too. We'll just zigzag our way back over here to the spaceship. Uh, honestly, not too bad of a spawn. We didn't have any uh, giant canyons or any like uh, big caves or impassable walls between our obstacles here. It was just uh, nice, normal little trapes through the uh, irradiated hellscape. Kind of looks like an aquarium at night. Okay, getting close now. Um, one thing that I haven't been doing well that I, may, I maybe should, just because I've been spoiled by my equipment on my main uh, save, is uh, alternating using Sprint and uh, Jetpack to uh, keep either one of them from running out and continue moving quickly. It's a very useful skill here. So we're going to access the Starship inventory. Going to go to the uh, Pulse engine. We're going to slap that Hermetic seal on. Uh, and the ship will say, hey, thanks. And by the way, we got to fix this other thing. So to repair the launch thrusters, we can make some dihydrogen jelly. Uh, this is what those blue crystals were for. They were dropping dihydrogen. So we'll crack this guy open. Get into the launch thrusters and uh, loop this part up. And then it'll say, hey, we need some ferrite, but not that regular ferrite. We need premium ferrite, pure ferrite. So we'll get out of the ship, and the ship will tell us very kindly, if you want to make pure ferrite, you got to make it by uh, refining it. So you need to construct a portable refiner, which means making metal plating, which means, you guessed it, more ferrite. So we've run out of uh, laser for our... For our our uh, mining charge laser thing here. Um, and so uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, this gives me an opportunity to show you how to get carbon the old fashioned way. We're gonna find some plants over here and uh, beat them up. The uh, right bumper button lets you uh, give a plant an unholy thrashing, Minecraft style. It takes some time. But uh, this is your last resort for when you absolutely run out of carbon. So we'll take this uh, carbon here, charge that mining beam back up, and uh, roast this tree the rest of the way. So uh, back into the inventory, going over here to grab the ferrite dust. We're going to make a metal plate. And it's going to say, hey, you need some oxygen. So, uh, the scanner here, uh, looks like there's some oxygen plants around, it's, uh, convenient. Um, oh yeah, there's some even nearer than that. This cluster of four plants that always spawns near your base, just for your convenience. Um, grab just as much as we need, and, uh... Yeah, so you press the up button on the D-pad if you're playing on an Xbox or uh, whatever is in your uh, quick binds to uh, make a portable refiner. Deploy it here. The portable refiner does need some fuel to get started. Um, I'd recommend condensed carbon if you have it and regular carbon because you're not going to use condensed carbon for anything else. Um, then you would go break some rocks again to... Uh, get the stuff that you need to turn regular ferrite dust into pure ferrite. This is a plant, actually. This is a pent pentexagonal thing there. That's interesting. I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't scanned it. And, uh... Yeah, so we'll take our ferrite dust. 
move over here. You click the input, it'll let you select the thing that you want to put in there. Now we need exactly 50, so I'm gonna just use the stack counter by pressing up and down on the D-pad there to make the ferrite. Alright, so we'll take the pure, pure ferrite, put that in the exosuit. Um, and we don't really need the portable refiner for anything. Because it's portable, you can press the left stick here, crack it, and pick it up. Um, and not only does it give you the portable refiner back, but it also gives you however many carbon worth of fuel you had in the system. And a little trick is, uh, if you need to convert condensed carbon back into regular carbon, just put 34 condensed carbon into a refiner break it and it'll give you a hundred regular carbon. There's not a recipe for that, but it's a nice little trick. So, with that, take the launch thrusters, put that pure ferrite in there, um, and the uh, starship is repaired. All systems functional. Your next quest is to seek answers among the stars. So to take off, you would uh, hold the right trigger and it would uh, take you up skyward and uh, you can get off of this awful planet. So uh, just for the sake of completeness, uh, where this video will end and where my next video will begin, uh, I'm gonna do just that. We're gonna use half of the remaining fuel in the launch thruster to get off of the planet, say goodbye, uh, pull back to 90 degrees upward, and uh, hold down this trigger. Alright, so now we are off of that awful hell world. Uh, this is not a video about flight, really. I think my primary objective was just to get out of the bad place where it's uh, constantly eating your resources. Um, but just for the sake of getting to somewhere safe, I'm uh, going to demonstrate moving around a little bit. So uh, it tells you to use your boosters, to use your stick, to use your uh, triggers as your throttle here. To get out and then uh, to uh, use the pulse engine on an Xbox controller it's uh, holding left bumper and right bumper for a second and then click them again to turn it off now the game knows that you know how to fly your ship it's going to give you an incoming transmission uh, and this option doesn't really matter you can identify yourself or listen but I'm going to use identify myself here you are not alone and it gives you planetary coordinates to somewhere that doesn't suck. Which is uh, actually really convenient. So just uh, steer your way over there. Um, in order to go to somewhere that is very distant, it says one day, but it doesn't actually take a day to get there. Uh, my recommendation is to uh, use your pulse engines by uh, holding left bumper and right bumper. That will engage your uh, slightly physics violating pulse engines. And uh, take you over to the signal source, which in this case is uh, another crash site with a beacon. So um, use your throttle and your boost to get down to the signal source. You can use your shoulder buttons to roll over if being upside down bothers you, as I believe it should. And uh, landing is actually remarkably easy in this game. You use your left trigger to slow down. And uh, then you press the X button on the controller here to initiate the automatic landing sequence. And that puts us on this planet, which is uh, cold, real cold. Um, snowy, it's isolated, it's not particularly comfortable. Uh, but it does have the thing that you need the most at this point in the game, which is a save point. Um, and there you have it. We're, uh, we're on a, a much nicer planet than the one we were on before. Uh, so uh, with that, I think that will conclude the um, tutorial period of this first video. Uh, if you've got anything else 
that you want to see or know about or see me do, if there's something I didn't explain particularly well that you have questions on, uh, just let me know. And uh, I'll pick this one up in the next one.